All right, well, let's get started. Welcome everyone to our marketing assessments webinar. We're so honored to have our entire marketing team here. My name is Monica, Monica Sari. I'm the VP of Assessments 24-7 and here to kind of guide you through this, this webinar. Um, we have today with us from marketing, Amy Lewis. She's our digital marketing specialist, AKA I like to call her our social media queen. Hi, Amy, thanks for joining. And we also have Jared Moore here. He's our VP of Marketing Strategy, and they're gonna go over some incredible information for you today about how to market your business and assessments. So we'll go over general marketing, social media, give you a marketing roadmap, and talk about authenticity, um, and end up with the marketing materials that we provide you through Assessments 24-7. And before we get started, just a reminder to everyone that you will get a recording of this webinar and you will also get the slide deck. So no worries. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. And yeah, we're gonna call a little audible here, guys. Thanks for your patience. We tried right. to run through earlier and everything was working well, but of course. Fortunately, you know, when things happen live, that can happen sometimes. So all right, guys, uh, my name is Jared Moore. I am the VP of strategy. Hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better. Um, give me a little feedback if you guys can't, or hopefully this is gonna be a little bit better. But um, we are going to revisit with uh, Amy in just a little bit here. Um, but what I'd like to do is talk about a marketing roadmap for everybody. You know, we're gonna come out of this. Uh, we're very optimistic about how, um, you know, we're gonna come out of this strong. You know, we're gonna get through it. But now is the time where you can really focus on your marketing and sales initiatives, right? This is a great opportunity where you can get all your quote unquote ducks in a row uh, and, and really make sure that you're ready to go when we all come out of this. So that being said, I've split up our uh, marketing roadmap into five different pillars. The first one is going to be discovery. Uh, we need to really discover more about our prospects. Um, how, how do your prospects tick? What do they like? What are the interest, uh, interests that they have? Really wrap your head around uh, your prospects and, and who they are. Next is the setup. We wanna make sure that you have a solid foundation for your sales and marketing so that you have a stable foundation for your success. Content, what kind of content do you need to create? What is going to resonate and uh, relate to your prospects? And you make sure that when you're speaking to them that they understand where you're coming from. Promotion. We just went through and created all these things. We created the content. How do we get the word out? How do we get in front of the right prospects? And how do we execute our marketing strategy? Lastly, and I would argue even the most important is tracking. How do you know what, what you're doing is actually working? And do you need to make adjustments? Do you need to scale up? Or do you need to stop certain initiatives that are not performing well? All right, I like this quote from Evan Pagan. Uh, he's a pretty well-known entrepreneur. Uh, when you really understand your customer and what their needs are, you can create things that speak directly to them and really meet their needs. So this really pairs well with, we just talked about how we need to figure out what our ideal customer is, understand their needs, so that then we can create content that speaks directly to them. All right, so how do we do that? Uh, we need to figure out who our target audience is. And I like to always say you can't hit a target that you haven't set yet. So how do we define who the target audience is? What industry do you want to go after? We probably have a lot of coaches on this call. Uh, you know, do you want to go after certain verticals? Do you want to go after certain industries? Who do you want to target? And also ask yourself, what does your ideal client look like? If you were to get into a client engagement, uh, who is your perfect prospect that you want to be working with? What's an ideal client? Kind of paint that picture in your head. A great way to do that is to do an exercise called a, called a customer avatar or a user persona. And essentially, this is an, a fictional character that you write down on paper um, that represents exactly what your perfect client looks like. So, you know, write down what their interests are, maybe their income, uh, you know, what they, if they have a family, that kind of stuff. You map that out and that allows you to get clarity. Oh, go back for me, Monica. That allows you to have clarity on what that person looks like and how you can speak to them directly. So, uh, and also communicate with them. So there's a different style and approach that we have internally with, you know, let's say we're working with a corporate person, we will speak to them and have different verbiage than we do with, let's say a business coach. Uh, it's a different audience, so we can tailor our messaging accordingly. So 
through this exercise, and again, at the very bottom, um, and Monica mentioned at the early at the start of this call that we're going to be sharing the slides, so don't worry about these links, but we uh, are sharing an avatar that you guys can use. Um, it's a template that you can uh, go download, so we'll have that for you guys. So when you go through this user persona exercise, this is going to help you figure out, okay, where are my, these ideal clients that I want? Where are they hanging out? Where can I go find more of them? What kind of content should I be creating? Uh, and also what kind of interests do they have so that you know how you can speak to them appropriately. Okay, so now we've gone through that exercise. We know, okay, I wanna work with this particular client. Uh, we're good to go there. I know what I wanna do. Now is a really good time to lay the foundation for your marketing landscape. But also one of the things you need to do is really wrap your head around your competitive landscape as well. So who are your main competitors and what are they doing? If you go do some competitive analysis and research, you're gonna find out, okay, th this is what they're doing, but this is how I'm gonna differentiate myself. In a sea of noise, you need to make sure that you're standing out. And so if you go do some competitive analysis, you can see, okay, these guys are doing this. I'm gonna make myself better and stand out from them by doing X, Y, Z, or whatever that might be. Next, if you have a, let's say you have a small team, uh, or I don't know, you guys have some help and employees that are helping you. One thing that often gets overlooked is determining the ownership and the budget. So who's gonna be doing what? Who's gonna own what tasks? Who's gonna be running with which projects? Also, assign a budget. Uh, if you're gonna be doing paid media campaigns that we'll talk about in a little bit here, uh, what's the budget? How much are you willing to put at stake for these campaigns? Identify these things now so that you can build a system and a process and plan accordingly. So when you do determine a process, I recommend that you basically map out everything on paper, uh, just get everything dialed in so that you can see this is what I think a perfect flow will look like. And then you come back and you can try and automate different things. And when I say automation, uh, things I'm referring to are marketing automation. You can have you know, nurture series of emails that go out, all that kind of good stuff that can help make you more efficient and scale. And the way that you do that is by utilizing tools and CRMs. So uh, here at Assessments 24-7, we do uh, use Infusionsoft. There's loads and loads and loads of CRMs out there. I mean, it's a super saturated industry. They all basically do the same thing, but we use Infusionsoft. Uh, you might like HubSpot. That's probably my recommendation for everybody on this call, just because they have a great free plan. Um, it's probably gonna do a lot of the things that you need. And especially considering the state of the economy right now, uh, a lot of the things here I'm gonna try and uh, suggest to you guys are going to be free, uh, hopefully. So anyways, so there's some tools there that you wanna do. A CRM is not only just gonna help you stay organized, but it's also going to allow you, <clears throat> excuse me, to make sure that you can implement, you know, follow-up sequences. Um, I read a stat the other day. Uh, if you guys are not following up with your sales prospects, 92% of salespeople give up after four tries. Here's the kicker. 80% of prospects will say no four times before they end up saying yes. So if you're going to stop, your competitors are going to follow up five times and they're gonna get that business. The way that you can help make sure that you follow up five times is to stay organized using a CRM and also implement follow-up emails and other automation. Next up, uh, tools, some really good tools that you can do to also help with your emails. MailChimp, it's free. Yesware and Reply are good tools as well, but I recommend for our business coaches and everybody on this call that uh, MailChimp is gonna be a good solution. They have a great free plan, it's pretty intuitive. Um, so those are some tools that you can use to get started. Recommend hopping in now, like I said, lay this foundation while you have the time and the ability. But also you need to make sure that from a reporting and metric, metric standpoint uh, that you have some baseline set. Uh, if you do not have Google Analytics, I highly recommend making sure that you have that on your site right away. That essentially is gonna allow you to have a peek into your website and see uh, you know, what your traffic looks like, all the website statistics, all that kind of stuff. You can set goals. A uh, goal such as, you know, if somebody fills out a contact form, buys something from you, and then you can have um, revenue benchmarking as well as KPIs. So a KPI, if anybody doesn't know what that is, that's a key performance indicator. That can be a metric that you sent, uh, that you set, such as uh, filling out a contact form, um, maybe time on site, maybe, you know, they uh, clicked on some button. You set those actions that you want, and then you can run metrics against, reports uh, against that. So... Um, let me just close this real quick. There we go. Okay, so uh, now that we have that installed, 
let's do a website checkup. Amy was going to talk about this um, in her slides. Uh, but basically, when's the last time that you guys went and looked at your own website? You know, it's one of those things that we tend to set it and forget it. But when you think about it, you need to be going back to your website, making sure that it's, you know, still the messaging's on point. Uh, the, the, the content that you're putting out there is resonating with your prospects. And also, you know, things happen. Links break, uh, all that kind of stuff. You need to be doing checkups just to make sure. Um, there's a, a little website audit tool that's free here. I recommend you guys can go, you know, run your website through that. It'll catch errors, things like that from a structural standpoint. But a big one is mobile friendly. Is your website mobile friendly? Uh, I saw another uh, report recently that 40, over 40% 40 of traffic these days is mobile. If your site's not mobile friendly, you're going to be basically missing out on 40% of your traffic because those people are going to get frustrated. They're going to give up. They're going to leave your site and they're going to go to your competitors. So if you don't have that, that's a, uh, something that is something that should be on your priority list. So that being said, I want to take a quick poll, take a break and see uh, where are your leads coming from? Let's go ahead and launch the poll, Monica. All right. As that's loading, I just launched it. Do you see it? Yep. There we go. So as that's uh, everybody's filling out the poll, um, if you are not sure, this is a great test of why you need to have Google Analytics installed because this would tell you, oh, I know that a lot of my prospects, a lot of my website traffic is coming from, uh, you know, paid paid media or you know social media. I want to ramp up those channels and scale those um, or. Maybe I, I don't want as much focus in these areas. So let's give some people some time here. We have about 70% voted. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and publish these results. Very heavy on the referrals. Can you see those results? There we go. So I'll just read these real quick. So we have about 6% direct mail, 4% Google organic search, 2% paid advertising, 10% social media, 78% referrals, zero print and zero podcasts. That's huge. Okay, very interesting. So basically what I'm learning from this poll is that you guys all have a lot of room for growth here. Uh, you guys are leveraging your own personal networks, which is fantastic. Um, the easiest and cheapest way to get new clients is referrals, which you guys clearly know. But this is great because there's clearly a lot of untapped potential here um, for other channels for everybody to pursue. Okay, uh, before I dive into this next slide, I want to just kind of give a quick primer on Google search results. Um, some people are unaware that, you know, there's actually paid ads in Google. Um, people will also say, you know, I pay to be at the top. Oftentimes they're referring to the paid ads. So usually when you search for something, you're going to see the first, uh, you know, it varies anywhere from like one to four ads that will show up at the very top. This is pay to play. And uh, this is through Google AdWords. And this is essentially, you're going to have, you're going to pay Google every time somebody clicks on your ad. It's an auction style system, so it's going to vary uh, in terms of cost, depending on how many people are trying to do the same thing and how competitive um, your keywords are. Um, but that is exactly what paid ads are. The local results is in the middle here. This is going to be uh, the localized search results. It usually will show up on a map, um, have you know more information about a local business. The uh, bottom of that, where a lot of the um, search results are, are going to be your organic results. And these are the sites that naturally rank or organically rank based off of Google's algorithm. So these are not paid. This is just basically, you know, Google likes these websites and they're promoted at the top. Um, and that's how you show up there. And we'll dive into that in just a second here. But this will just give you an idea because on the next slide, we're going to talk about these different channels. Okay, so um, I'm gonna keep this a little bit high level just because we could probably have talks on each of these um, segments here individually. But I was talking about search engine optimization a little bit. That was at the very bottom of that last slide, the naturally ranking organic results. Um, this is basically when you're rewarded for having good content or a good website that Google likes, you're gonna rank higher. There's some, some key ways that you can make sure that you show up. It does take a long time. You have to have some domain authority or what that means is that Google trusts your website and they see you as an authority in your space. 
Um, if you want to uh, try and really focus on this, which you should, um, there's two different avenues that you can um, go after to rank higher. The first thing is on-site SEO. This means that you have a good technical structure. Um, your website has clean code. You have all the structural elements in place. And then also link building. Link building is, um, you probably have heard people say, you know, I need to get links to my website, things like that. Google views links to your site as basically like a vote. So if Google sees, um, let's say CNN look, linking to your website, that's gonna be a huge signal to them because a really big website like CNN is linking to you. Now there's smaller sites that don't have as much weight, but Google takes all of this into consideration and it sees these as essentially votes of if your website should be ranked higher on top of your on-site SEO. Um, so if you have good quality content, good structure, all the technical elements in place, things like that. When you're creating content, if you have WordPress, that's usually one of the most common platforms out there. Um, you can in, uh, install a plugin called Yoast. It's a great plugin that will help you make sure that all your formatting and all of your structural elements are in place. It'll give you keyword suggestions, things like that. It's a fantastic tool uh, that I highly recommend for anybody that has WordPress. Uh, you can really get your site dialed in. Market Muse is great for research. This is a paid tool, but if you're creating content, um, this is gonna be very, very helpful. It will give you ideas. It will give you all kinds of stuff that will really help you create quality content. Google, uh, when I first started doing digital marketing, you know, we could keyword stuff, we can do all kinds of you know, quick tactics to try and uh, to rank higher. These days, Google's much, much, much smarter than that. Um, you really need to focus on having quality, well, well-written content. Um, that is what Google's gonna like. But the main thing when I talk to people is just focus on having uh, quality content that's, that's readable, but also appeals to your audience. If you feel comfortable putting that content in front of one of your prospects and you're proud of that, that's, that's an excellent signal that you're doing a good job. So focus on that when you're creating content. Uh, if you do a good job creating good content, usually the rankings will follow. Um, people will start to link to it because you're creating good stuff and you'll start to rank higher. So that is for the organic side. I'm gonna switch, remember back to our other slide, the map. I'm gonna to switch to Google local uh, or local SEO. Um, the easiest way for anybody to get started on this is gonna to be to uh, go create an account with Google My Business. Get that absolutely dialed in 100% as best you can. That's gonna allow you to um, pop into those maps um, and start ranking, um, especially for some of our coaches here. If you're you know, focusing on a certain geographic location or region, Los Angeles business coach, things like that, that is where you're gonna start popping up because Google's gonna say, okay, these businesses are in this area and you'll start popping for those search results. So, all right, also on that screenshot at the very, very top, we had those ads. So how do you get to those? You would need to go create an account with Google AdWords. Again, you, this is pay to play. You're gonna have to pay every time somebody clicks on it. Um, there are agencies and there's consultants out there that can help you with this. There's also a lot of great material, even through Google, uh, on how to get up and running quickly. Um, this is the fastest and uh, most immediate return if you guys are looking to, to move quick. You can launch a campaign and be up and running, and then if you are bidding on keywords, you're going to show up right away. If it doesn't work, you can, you can actually turn it off and, and pivot to something else. So. Um, take a look at that. Just a reminder that that does require some advertising dollars, um, but it's probably one of the most effective channels. For us, it's in our top three of all of our leads. Remarketing and retargeting, it's similar. Uh, paid approaches. This is essentially, I'm sure a lot of you guys have gone to Amazon. You know, maybe you're shopping for something on Amazon and then you go to see CNN again uh, and all of a sudden that product is following you around the web. That's called remarketing. Uh, you get cookied. They know that you visit a certain page and those banners are gonna follow you around the web. Um, it's, a, it's a less effective, but much, much, much cheaper method to pay and get leads. Um, so that's a great avenue you can try. Same goes for display advertising. You can um, bid and have banners show up uh, on certain things like YouTube. Let's say there's a coaching video that's on YouTube that gets a lot of views. Not a lot of people are bidding on it. You can actually have your ad show up um, as a banner or also as like a pre-roll ad uh, at the start of the video um, and get some, some cheaper cost per click that way. LinkedIn does have a paid, uh, a paid platform. We've experimented with it. I've had a lot of clients in the past at my old agency that we did it as well. It's very expensive. Um, it's worth trying. We're big on trying a lot of different things and measuring to see what works. Um, 
I have seen some success, but it's a little bit more expensive. Facebook ads also pay to play. Uh, if we have anybody that's certified with us on our webinar today, there's a very good chance that you guys actually found out about us through our Facebook certification campaign. So um, that's another avenue you can look into as well. So that covers our previous slide of um, the Google search results and those channels. But I wanna talk about something, even though I'm a digital guy, uh, <laughs> direct mail, guys, it works. Uh, before joining Assessments 24 seven, I had a startup that did pretty well and we had 100% of our customer acquisition through direct mail. I, I'm thoroughly convinced that, you know, we're all just overloaded checking our emails every day. When you go to the mailbox and you actually get a letter that's either handwritten or looks like it's handwritten um, and sent from somebody, it's gonna get opened. Um, it's, it, it works. So I, I actually encourage people to try uh, some direct mail, see what happens. Go back to your user persona or your avatar, go look at that, go find people that mirror your user persona, and then you can uh, uh, go do some direct mail for them. Same thing is kind of similar, but this is switching gears to digital, uh, manually contacting your, your prospects. So you can do this either through LinkedIn or cold email. So I would just set a goal, maybe 50 day, 50 a day total, carve out some time. It is uh, probably a little monotonous. It's going to, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to take some sweat equity, but the thing is it's free and you're going to get some sales uh, out of it. So go cold email 25 people a day. But when you do these, make sure that it's very, very personalized and targeted. Don't just you know, take a template and spam everybody over and over again. Um, that's not gonna work. Go to their website, do some research on them, relate to them. Remember, go back to your avatar, make sure that it uh, is resonating with them and you're sending the right message. Thanks, Monica. Thanks so much, Jared. And I definitely wanna check in on Amy. Hopefully the sound is better. We definitely wanna hear from you. How are you doing, Amy? Can we hear her? Let's see here. I don't have her muted. Okay, we'll go. I have a couple more slides, Monica. We'll give her a little bit of time. Do you wanna do you wanna finish up? Yeah, go to 15, okay. please. Oh wait, can you hear me now? Yes. Monica. Yes. There we go. I, I had to unmute twice. Oh good. I think Jared wants to finish up. I just wanted to check oh. in on you and make sure that you know we had everything. Okay, so is this the slide you want? Yeah, here we go. There we go. Go for it, Jerry. Okay, so here's the last component of the, the five pillars that I was referencing earlier. So we've done all this stuff. We've built a customer avatar. Um, you know, we've figured out our marketing and sales foundation. We have um, created the content that we wanna do and now we start promoting it. But do we know if it's working or not? This is the most important question. Um, go back to your Google Analytics. Remember, we installed this at the beginning. Uh, it's, it's fairly simple to install, by the way, guys, if um, you have a web developer or a team that can help you, but even if you have access to your website, you should be able to do it with their instructions. Um, it's free. Um, this will give you all the data that you need to know. Um, this will tell you where people are coming from. You can even connect ROI to this um, or ROAS, return on ad spend. Uh, this is how you are going to figure out if it's actually working. Uh, if it's working, great. Throw more dollars at it. Scale it up. If it's not, pull the plug on it. Uh, try a new hypothesis or a new campaign and launch that one and then rinse and repeat. Just constantly be checking what's working, monitoring your stats um, and all of your, your metrics to make sure that everything's working well. So that also will go into call tracking. There's a lot of tools out there that will help with call tracking if you want to use that. Um, one thing that I do want to talk to everybody about is your cost per lead or CPL. Ask yourself a question when you are getting started, how much am I willing to pay a lead for a lead? If, if I would to say, okay, you know, every time you get a qualified prospect uh, into your, your funnel, you're going to pay $250. That might sound like a lot, but if your close ratio is really high and that consulting agreement or a coaching agreement is going to be $5,000, you're going to do it. So ask yourself how much you're willing to pay, because if you can identify how much you're willing to spend on a cost per lead basis, you can then use that data to identify what's working and what's not. So use that as your barometer of if your campaigns are being effective. Uh, constantly review 
test new things, come up with new ideas, uh, measure if it's working, scale it up. If it's not, pull back and launch something new. Wonderful. Are you done, Jared? Is that I am done. Of Thank you so much. That's such valuable information. Oh, I'm I gonna... think I am. <laughs> uh, sorry, one more slide. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's what I would I would uh, challenge everybody to do today. Um, again, keeping in mind the state of the economy, uh, we don't want to be saying you need to throw you know hundred thousand dollars at this. Uh, the, a lot of these things on this list are not going to cost you any any money at all. Just your time um, and a little bit of sweat equity. Make sure you have Google Analytics installed. We just reviewed why that's so important. Start a blog. Uh, use Yoast, that plugin that we talked about earlier. If you can get some guidance on keywords. Social media accounts, um, if you don't have those, get those out the door, start sharing. But keep in mind, you don't wanna have content that is you know, not relevant. Go back to your user persona, see what types of content your customers are going to enjoy and consume. They're not gonna care about the picture of your dog. Maybe they will, I don't know. But you gotta just keep in mind that you wanna make sure that the content that you're putting in front of them is relevant and is something that's gonna to appeal to them. Uh, we talked a lot about SEO and different things like that, but um, it's a really, really big topic. I highly recommend this, the, the Moz's Beginner's Guide to SEO. This will tell you more than you need to know. Um, there are whole industries and, and specialists and experts just in SEO, but this will give you more than a, a solid understanding of, of uh, how it all works. Start an email campaign. If you don't have a list, start building your list. Get a subscribe button on your website. Um, start building your contact list and start email marketing. Um, if you don't have a tool, again, you can use MailChimp. The free audience or the free um, plan will work, especially if you're just getting started. Um, so go get that up and running. If you're feeling adventurous, start a paid media campaign. Again, that costs money, um, but that is uh, in our top three of where all of our prospects come from. Outreach to prospects, LinkedIn and email. This does not cost any money. Uh, set a goal. Go for it guys, go get those sales, you can do it. Um, this is not gonna cost you any money. Just keep it relevant and personalized as much as you possibly can as you're reaching out to these prospects. Um, one little tip, uh, we talked a little bit about automation. Implement something like Calendly. Um, how many of you guys have gone back and forth trying to schedule a meeting with somebody and before you know it's like seven or eight emails just trying to identify time. And if you look at it, you just spent a bunch of time doing that. Get a Calendly account, they have a free plan you send them your link, they book time directly on your calendar, and boom, you're done. Uh, get a CRM. Again, I recommend the free HubSpot plan for everybody. That would be um, a great solution to get started, get organized, uh, then identify your, your systems and your processes, and then see what you can automate through that. Um, and that is it for me, guys. Well, thank you, Jared. Again, such valuable information. And so I hope everyone takes your advice. This is good. Um, I'm going to go back to Amy's slides and we're just getting a little close on time. So just wanted to uh, remind everyone, I want to keep it pretty tight. So we have about um, 10 more minutes about go for it, Amy. All right. So you can hear me now, right? Is that better? Awesome. So sorry about that, everybody. I live in the land of, uh, great fiber and for whatever reason i must have had a bad connection today um so well, i'm gonna go i'm gonna go through this pretty quick but i think i've got some actionable stuff for you here so i want to first talk about your website and jared touched on this a little bit when was the last time you visited your site does it represent who you are now you may have built your site five years ago and kind of set it and forget it does it represent who you are now and what kind of business you're doing now? And even more specific than that, very simply, do all your links work? So when the, uh, the first thing I do whenever I get notified that somebody has finished their certification is I go to your website and I want to follow you as assessments 24-7 on all of your social media and almost everybody lots of people have links to their social media either up in their header or in their footer or somewhere on their site and i can usually find those but um what i find 
often enough for it to be for me to want to mention it to everybody is sometimes whenever I click those social media links, they don't actually take me to your social media. So I can't find you on social, um, at least not very easily. So if you're only going to do one thing, go to your site and make sure your social media links are working after this. Um, and so I guess the caveat to that is if you don't have your social links on your site, get those on your site as well. And then, of course, make sure they work. Um, if you are uh, wanting to dive more into social media, the big question everybody has, if you're not into it already, is where should I be? Should I be on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? Um, prob TikTok, probably not, but you never know. Um, so the best case scenario for that decision on where should you be in social media is where are your customers, first of all, because you want to be where your customers are. And where do you feel most comfortable? So if you're not comfortable on your social media platform, you're not going to be posting on there and you're not going to be interacting. So uh, it's important to try to find an intersection of those two things, where your customers are and where you are. But if you can't, if you're just not into social media and you're not sure where you should be, find where your customers are and go there and just do some research while you're there. Um, follow people that are doing similar things to you. Follow people that you like the way they post and the way they comment. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You can look at what other people in the industry are doing and you can copy that, not word for word, but the concept you can copy. So I would encourage you to do that. Get the feel for the platform if you're not already doing that. If you are already on, um, do a lot more interaction. Don't just push, push, push your agenda. Go see what other people are doing and comment on their posts and um, kind of get more interaction. So for a, we're, we'll do a pop up a quick poll and then while people are answering, we will go to the next slide. I would like to know what your preferred social media platform is that you're using right now. Um, so while you're answering that, uh, I want to talk about some, some different ways to interact and connect that you might not have thought of yet. And one of those is following hashtags. And I'm going to use the example here of LinkedIn. So on, and you can do this really effectively on both LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, if the others, Twitter, not so much, Facebook, not so much you don't see that um, people are using as many hashtags on those. But my example here, um, I've got a screenshot of LinkedIn. And if you do a search for hashtag, say I was gonna follow hashtag business coaching, I would do that search for business coaching and you can see I found it. Um, then, let's see, oh, let's see what the, uh, what does our social media poll say, Monica? LinkedIn. Awesome. I love LinkedIn too. So I'm there's with you. There's a lot in, on Facebook too, 21%. Yeah, 21% on Facebook, 7% uh, on Instagram, and 70% LinkedIn. I think that's great. I like to see y'all there. Okay, so back to this concept of following hashtags. So I've decided, yeah, I want to see what business coach, what following business coaching might be like. So I click that and then I can see there are 8,400, 8,500 people following the business coaching hashtag. So that means you're probably going to get a decent amount of interaction by following it. So then I click follow and I don't have specific uh, specific ones from business coaching because this was just a quick screenshot of my feed. But you can see I'm following the leadership hashtag. I'm also following the coaching hashtag. And so the way these work in the wild is um, I can go follow it. I can see, I can type it in there and I can see a full, full blown feed of uh, posts that have been hashtagged with whatever business coaching, but also I get notified in my in my usual notifications when there's a major when there's a big conversation going on 
regarding a specific hashtag like this one where um, Kyle Gillette must have, he hashtagged leadership in one of his posts and it's trending because people are commenting on it and there's a conversation going on about it. So this is a great way not only to find customers, so you can follow hashtags that will help you find customers, but you can also follow hashtags that will help you connect with other people in the industry. And that is a, that's really valuable to have that connection to your peers. Um, so there's another one. You can leave this webinar today, go to LinkedIn and find some hashtags to follow. It's as simple as that. There's no, no real technology required in that one. Uh, my final tip is what can you offer for free right now? So as a company, uh, Assessments 24-7 has really found a niche in running these webinars. Um, and we're getting to connect with a lot of our partners and uh, new customers. So think about the things. Think outside the box. What can you offer for free right now? Because it's not a big spending time for people. So there you go. Thank you, Amy. Seven that minutes was, flat, Monica. That was great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the content. Um, you know, as you think about creating this new marketing plan and writing and creating posts, think about telling your authentic story. And what I mean by that is talk about the industry that you came from, maybe before you were a coach, or if you're an internal training leader within an organization, talk about why assessments are so important to you. And the reason why we wanted to mention this is because when you tell your authentic story, it creates automatically a unique selling proposition. There's no other person in the world that's like you. It can't be copied your unique story will ring true to a lot of people and they'll relate to that. So again, I really encourage everyone as you're thinking about this marketing, um, you're creating social media posts, presentations. We have a lot of co uh, consultants that we work with that are writing books right now. Talk about who you are. That authenticity will ring true and people will really listen to that. You know, people want to buy from people that they that they can relate to. So at the same time, let's keep in mind that we're selling to a variety of DISC styles, right? So a lot of the folks on this call today are certified with us through DISC. And so they know when you're talking with a D or if you're creating marketing materials as well, be sure to be quick to the point, direct, tell the Ds how they're gonna win by working with you or using these assessments. When you're creating content for eyes, it better be entertaining. It better be engaging. It has to be fun. For S's, we want to be accommodating. We want to create security. We want to talk to them about how it's going to be incredibly safe to work with you. And C's, you have to be the most detailed of all. Uh, for example, we list all of our validation studies on our website that have to do with the assessments. The C's eat those studies up. So we all, I always link to those studies if I'm selling to a D. So just a quick reminder about the DISC styles and we do have marketing materials available to you. If you're a member of Assessments 24 seven, you just click this marketing one sheets and you already have DISC and other assessment marketing one sheets that you can use. You can make them your own and you can brand to yourself. They're on your resource center and let us know if you need help finding that. Um, and then as we end today, just a quick reminder, we're continuing to do the group certifications for DISC, motivators, and emotional intelligence. Um, and we did, because this has been really popular, we are launching a new date for the DISC certification. It's going to be June 17th and 18th. You all are the first to hear that on this webinar. So let us know if you want more information. You can contact us here. Um, and let us know. Just a quick reminder too, to please complete the survey. We're doing these webinars in direct response to the surveys and the results that we're getting on the surveys. We wanna create content that you wanna hear about. So if you do complete the survey, you'll be entered to win two free assessments uh, on Friday at 2 p.m. So thank you so much for joining us. Is there any um, questions that came up that were- yeah. 
please use the Q&A box. Um, Dylan and Suzette have been helping everybody as we go here, but if there's any that are coming through, um, please drop those in there and we will um, uh, take a look to answer some of these. So I have one already. Um, let's see here. Suzette, can I please turn it over to you to read the questions? And maybe not all of them, maybe just some of the yeah. most popular. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we really only have um, two. So the first one that came in during the, uh, while you guys were talking here was, what about cold calling businesses to sell assessments? Does that work? Oh, interesting. Um, good question. Um, I think it will work. I think you're also probably going to get really frustrated. Um, it probably, in my opinion, it doesn't work as well as it used to. I would prefer to dedicate my time on cold email and cold outreach. Um, that way, I think that, you know, when it gets to them, they'll see it versus you trying to keep calling back. Um, it, part of the reason I think that it's not as effective as it used to be is that, um, you know, if you have everybody on this call probably gets robo calls left and right. And I think that people have gotten to a condition where they're just not answering numbers they don't recognize. Um, so that being said, I prefer to dedicate my time towards uh, cold email and LinkedIn outreach. Uh, they know who it's coming from ahead of time. And then also if they're busy, they can get to it later if they're interested. Yeah. And I'd like to add to that, Jared, um, LinkedIn is a great way start the communication, right? So you connect with them kind of cold on LinkedIn, then you graduate to emailing them, you know, you ask them on LinkedIn, oh, can I have your email address and email? And then you graduate to the phone call or webinar. Yeah. All right, Suzette, what's next? Um, so just one overall, we have a lot of people asking this, they're saying I'm not, I don't see the survey, where is it? This is actually all going to be emailed to you. So access to the slides, the webinar recording and the survey, that's all gonna get sent to you in a nice little package in an email, so you will see it there. Um, next one question we have that I can answer is, are the resources editable for a different language? So we have not um, translated any of the marketing materials ourselves. We don't have those readily available right on your dashboard. But the number one thing I always tell our clients is you can take any of your training materials, any of your marketing resources that we provide you and make them your own. You don't have to come to us for any permission to do anything with them. That is for you. Add your branding, translate them, put them in your own PDF. It is all for you. Um, and then the next one you guys might want to answer, and I think we'll really only have time for one more, is can you provide further guidance on CRM using MailChimp? Yeah, so MailChimp is more of a tool to actually manage your email list and uh, your broadcasts. Um, the CRM um, is going to be, you know, like HubSpot. You can use tools um, that will have a direct integration from MailChimp into your CRM. Um, so you have that. Um, in terms of, you know, mail list, I mean, excuse me, MailChimp, um, that's mostly going to be just for, for emailing your list um, and it's free. So take a look at that. They have some great instructional guides on how to get started. Um, but if you end up getting like a HubSpot, there are direct integrations so that the two can communicate to each other. Wonderful. One last thing I want to, be... to uh, fill everybody in on. Monica actually brought up a really good point. Um, I would encourage everybody to, uh, if you have the ability, send your prospects a assessment. Um, this is something that we started experimenting with. Uh, Monica hit on this a little bit, but you can actually not only know their style so that you can um, communicate more effectively, but it's, it's gonna ensure a smoother relationship um, and also higher close rate. Um, so just a little tip for everybody, if you have the ability to um, send your prospects uh, assessments prior to engaging with them. Good idea. Well, great. Well, I want to be sensitive of everyone's time. We really appreciate you joining us and we look forward to our next webinar. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.